Hello and welcome to the first take of my video. I'm saying first take because I'm sure I might have to, if I drop anything, I might have to redo bits. That's all right, I'll do it in one go and then cut out the bits that are rubbish. So this was two car boots on Sunday the 26th of June. And the turnout of both the car boot sales was fantastic. Um, I was trying to be a little bit more selective because I am swamped with stock at the moment. So I try to be selective and go for, you know, the 20, 25 pound plus items today. Um, didn't succeed entirely. The kitchenware seems to be going well at the moment. So I bought some pans. Mm. Well, they're not bad pans actually. They're all copper bottomed, or rather, they're not copper, but heavy base bottoms. Anthony Worrell Thompson, if you please. Um, all named Anthony Worrell Thompson on the side and embossed in the bottom. Some of them are a bit in need of a clean, but I don't mind that. It's stainless steel, it'll clean up with a chrome surface on the outside. And they've all got lids apart from the smallest saucepan. But all the pans and the frying pan have got lids. Um, one or two of the handles are a little bit loose, but it's just a matter of screwing them up. Oh, just put them onto the side there so they're out of the way. And that lot cost a fiver. Now, I've seen these pans going for more than a fiver each, so I'm pretty happy with that. Onyx Desk Tidy. Space for two pens, a slide for another pen there, and one of those little slidey date things, if you can see what I mean. It's only gilt, there's no gold involved. Um, it's real onyx, and there's a little sticker on the bottom to stop it scratching the desk. And they fold down for easy storage. Three pounds, not bad, eh? I've seen exactly the same model selling for over 20 pounds on eBay, maybe 23 pounds plus delivery. So, okay, two PS2 games for a pound. Um, Uncharted 3, test room that I have unlimited two. This is loose because the outside case doesn't have any plastic, but I've got loads of spare cases. Um, yeah, can't remember that. Uh, number two, I've already jumped, I've already out of order. Right, number two was uh, Digihome Freeview Receiver. I've done quite a lot of freeviews recently and they're selling like hotcakes with a remote and it's made of silver. No, it's not, it's made of plastic, but it's got silver coating on. Um, I plugged it in, tested it, seems to be fine. Um, okay. Number four is this. I'm sure lots of you are familiar with these. This is a Bosch Tassimo with a Brita filter uh, water reservoir. It doesn't have the filter in, you can just put a filter in if you want one. And that was a tenner, which seems a bit steep at first. Lady told me she's just uh, descaled it, which is nice of her. And she threw in the rest of the descaling tablets. And coffee by Kenko. Some more coffee by Kenko, unopened. Some Cadbury's. I've opened it to have a look at the size of them because they're massive then. There's only four in that box. There's eight in each of these. And a new pack of Costa. So I asked her why she was getting rid of it, and she said, I'm getting a really nice big new one. So, fair enough. Um, uh, that was number four. Number five was the satellite TV fly lead. So if you've got a satellite lead from your aerial, and it's not long enough, you can use one of these. And this is a 10 meter extension, and that cost a quid. That can go in the bag. Parcel tip. Guy was selling uh, two for 50p, three for a pound. Unfortunately, the guy before me had bought like three quid's worth and this is all he had left. So I got these for a pound. It is actually really strong. 
Um, I don't know what HWS stands for. It's probably a company name. I couldn't care less. PlayStation camera. Oh, by the way, I don't expect to be selling this. PlayStation camera, PS3, uh, for what do they call it? Um, iToy, is it? PS3 iToy. Uh, I do have some iToy games actually. 10 pack of animation diskettes. Um, I do have an animation disk drive, but I'll probably sell these separate because that'll sell on its own anyway. I did find a new disc in the garage, loose, to test the other disc drive with. Um, and so I don't need to open these open. <laughs> They're brand new, sealed. Next was Digital Camera by Finepix, or Fujifilm Finepix. It's a nice one. There we go. Uh, and it's the type with its own uh, little battery. There we go. So I knew that if it didn't work, I could sell the battery. But as it does, I've charged it up. It comes with a charging cable. Um, but there's no memory card. It's not a problem with this. It'll sell for 15 or 16 and it cost me uh, three, three pounds. I also bought a pink one, very similar. Um, it's got same type of thing, battery in there, um, no charging cable. And in fact, what I've found that is looking it up it needs a data cable or you can put the card straight in the computer obviously there is no card but it takes an SD um, but the cable does not charge the battery in the camera like in some of them like in that one so these are a bit cheaper because you need a charger as well um, but luckily it cost me a pound a joystick Tested this, it's all working. It's a Logitech Extreme D 3D Pro. And last time I sold one of these, I got £20 plus about £6 delivery. And this is how eBay works. It is now £20 free post because it's in the, the, the video game category. If you advertise it in the computer game category, not video, if you advertise in the computer accessories category, you can charge postage on it uh, over £3.50. But it's quite bulky. Last time I sold one of these, it was about a fiver to send it. But at £20 plus minus a fiver to send it, including and then commission and deliver insurance on top and all that shop stuff, not insurance, commission, uh, promotions, VAT on the promotions and the commission, and don't forget the promotions are on the postage as well. So um, if you buy this in too expensive, you can't make a profit. And it cost me four pounds. Now you take five pound out of 20, you take the commission and the VAT and the promotion and the VAT out of 20 and the postage out of 20, you're left with about five pounds, so I have no option but to go for twenty pound plus six pound delivery. And uh, if you don't sell at that, then you might as well just give up on selling these altogether. I got this from a clearance guy. This was near the end, but I'm doing it now because it's right in front of me. Buzz, uh, four buzzers, and a buzz game. So that was. A pound, that was a pound, and that was a pound. So three pounds. So this is a LG DVD player, but with no remote. Um, I'm going to order the remote. It's not a problem if I can't find it in the pile. These are a pound each. These should go for about fifteen pound between them. Uh, now. It didn't look as tidy as that when I bought it. In fact, it was just a big pile of wires, this literally this wide. 
and in with all those wires was a USB speaker that sort of shoots water up. Quite honestly, I think it's leaked and there's not enough water. But it's all right, because I'll just bin it if it doesn't work properly. Um, there's also two mini US, micro USB leads. And then there's an HDMI lead. And then two more mini micro, micro USB leads. And then uh, Xbox 360 headset with microphone. And some sort of Sony PlayStation thing, or at least it says PlayStation logo. Now, I'm not sure what it's meant to adapt to because it's too small for a PlayStation. It's too small for anything, but it's got a USB end. So I'm thinking maybe it's for a PlayStation Mini. I don't know. I really don't. I looked at it as a maybe a PSP, but it doesn't fit. And that's another thing I'm coming to in a minute. Anyway, that lot was all bundled up with the buzz buzzers. So I got all that for free. But I did have to pay a pound a piece for them. As I say, it was a clearance guy, and he's the same guy I got the other camera for for £95 and that bouncing rebound game and all that. And the next word out of his mouth after I sold, after I bought those for a pound a piece, and I knew it was, he did it on purpose. He took my money, and then the next word out of his mouth was, Right, it's clearance time, everything's 50 pence. <laughs> Which was annoying but there you go that's just the way it goes sometimes so everything was 50 pence after that i'd already got most of what i wanted um but i did have another look at his stall and i got these i got three movie reels with movie in um it's only silly uh super eight or whatever but it's um Super 8 and standard 8, 400 millimeter, 400 meter film reels. So quite long film reels, these. Um, they both say, start to Austria. And this one doesn't say something else. Can't, can't remember what it says. And some uh, fishing wire, um, fishing line. One pound fishing line. I don't think this is worth anything really. Um, it seems to be worth about four pound delivered. But if you look at it, it's too thick to go in a large letter. So I don't know how you'd make any money at it. So those cost two pounds. And then another stall, I bought these for 50 pence. Three scout leads. So that was one pound fifty. Um, and then Another stall, I bought uh, two DVD, two Blu-ray players for three pounds each. This one, Samsung H, sorry, BDP H5500, exactly the same as one I showed you last week. Uh, probably needs another remote, so I'll be buying those in bulk from now on. I think the, um, I think they're about six pound fifty to seven pounds. I'm not certain of that. But that's another 3D Blu-ray by Samsung. And this one is a Panasonic Blu-ray, but it's not 3D, and it has a remote with it. So the two of those came to uh, £6. And I looked at him as though I was going to say, Shall I, can I have them for fibre? He looked at me and he said, don't even ask for a discount. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, right, now I've uncovered the other stuff that I was going, oh, 50 pence. I've, I've got so many now, I'm going to start stop buying them even for 50 pence. Um, I must have 10 spares. But at some point in the winter, when I bought a load of uh, skyboxes for 
a pound a piece, um, these will come in handy. I'm, I'm certain people will be selling them off. From the look of what's going on in the world at the moment, I'm believing now that within six months we'll be in a recession. So start gathering your assets. And when I say assets, I mean things that people are going to buy off you that are going to save them money. Few free view recorders, uh, Blu-rays, DVD players. If they're not on a streaming service, they'll be, I'm not going to say a resurgence in DVDs, but people will watch them again. Um, right, so, um, Mario Kart 8 by Carrera. Um, I haven't even opened the box, quite honestly. It's, it's quite heavy and it's got the two little carts in there. I could see that they were in decent nick, nick battery powered. So if the batteries are still in the box, um, they could be all corroded. The battery box. Um, I haven't looked. So I'll tell you what, we'll open it live. Two hours later. That looks nice, nice and shiny. Here's the battery box. Well, it's heavy enough that it's got batteries in for definite. It runs on D cells, this. Oh, it would be. It's screwed down. So, bear with me a second. That is shaping, shaping up. up. Meanwhile. I didn't bother because, quite honestly, it doesn't really make a difference at the price I paid, three pounds. That seems to be very stiff. Now, this one's moving. That'll probably move now. Yeah, it is. It's strange how a little bit of extra pressure from the side can hold a screw. You start lo loosening one up, the other one comes off pretty easily. I think there's only a two. That one's spinning. That one's spinning. Here's the time for revealing. I think. Oh, excellent. That is good news. Duracells. I like Duracells. Not so much because they're really expensive and they last longer. Well, that's a good point. What I like about the Duracells is they very, very rarely leak. They're well-made batteries. They're, again, you have to pay through the nose for this sort of thing. These big batteries, I'm not sure what they cost, but they're expensive. Anyway, um, it's not leaked all over, so whether they work or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, if they've not leaked all over, even if they've run out, it'd be easy enough to get some more that are Duracells. In fact, I've got some Amazon Basics D cells in the garage that I only ever use for, for testing. So, um, so I test it for a few minutes to see whether it worked and then put them back in their box. The rest looks good. The cars look, oh, I don't know what that is for. Oh, it's to hold it down while we're uh, on display. So we've got, they're just like little scale extra cars. They've got little um, metallic brushes on the front and they sit in the little slots. There you go. So it seems, as you can see, that these have a magnet. I wish scale extra cars would have done that. When I was a kid, they were always falling off the track. Look at this. That's impressive. I bet they hardly ever fall off the track. That's really clever. Okay. Two little um, squeeze box things. Yeah, not bad for three quid. A decent sized bundle buy, which I bought from uh, the guy I go to every week for electrical gear and gaming gear. And I try to buy from him every week, so long as he's got something that's worthwhile. And he had some more stuff. Another Nintendo DS. This is a red one and it's nice um it's not all scratched up but i have noticed there's a little 
crack in one of the little hinges there and it doesn't stay back as far as it's meant to go it goes to there and there's meant to be a click and then a click but it doesn't have that last click because the hinges got a bit worn there and cracked it should click there and stay but it's not doing i'm not bothered and I'll point it out when I sell it, and it'll go for five pound less. Um, it came with a charger this time, and he wanted a tenner for that. And I did point out this crack, but he said I still want a tenner. Well, I'll explain what happened in a minute. So that was something I said I can't do a tenner. What else have you got? So he's got a PSP, and he's like. I need £12 for this. And that's not a bad price. He said he had a charger and I've got it, but it's not, it's a third party charger. It just says for PSP 1A, 1 amp. And it's got the right charger end, so it does charge it. I'll put that to the side for the moment. So there's the PSP. Now, I've charged them both up. Um, this one's got nothing in it right now. Um, and it's working fine and it has the little thing what do they call it? stylus so it wasn't charging neither of them were charged up which I really don't like but he's a fairly re reasonable and good guy as far as uh, reliability is concerned so um, I was thinking maybe 8 with the charger but that was in my mind, not his. He wanted a tenner. And then I was thinking maybe £10 for this. Um, I didn't see the charger at the time. He hadn't mentioned the charger. And it was not charged, not charging up. Um, the back's nice and clean. It opens up. It has got this sort of white label on over where it was. And I never thought of anything over, apart from maybe somebody's put the price on it that he's bought it from. Um, but now I'm thinking it's one of those clearance labels. Because now I have charged it up, the screen's about damaged. The front's fine, it's the LCD behind it. I didn't know that at the time, and he wanted £12. So that would have been £22. For the two and I wasn't impressed quite honestly even at 22 no not knowing that that was damaged because I try not to give a price where if it's damaged I have to take it back at this price 12 pound I'm like that about taking it back I might ask him for the money back on it and I'm sure they would be okay about that because he's always been fairly upfront with me about the fact that he tests everything when he hasn't tested this properly. And I'm thinking that label there is going to be turned over at some point. Anyway, at the price, £12, it's a bit steep for a broken one. If it had been £8 and it had been broken, I wouldn't have cared less. But that £4 extra, I've got to start looking at money. But even at the, assuming it was working, £22 for those two was too much. So I looked around on what else he had on the stall. And he had this camera. It's a Casio Exilim. And it's a Casio battery. So normally I would like, be happy with three, four pound. He's like, oh, these cameras are five pound each. I'm reducing them from six pound for you to five pound. I'm like, five pound is too much. Three pound each is fair. We're like sort of working on a price here. Um, there's this one and there's this. And this is a Nikon Coolpix. Um, but it's not charging up. Actually, it takes an EL10 battery. I don't have the charging cable for this, I don't think. Um, 
it's hidden away somewhere. You know what, it might be the same as the Olympus. If it is, then I'll charge it up and see. But quite honestly, right now, I don't have any other facilities for charging it. Um, what hope is there in Olympus? Anyway, so I said to him, look, it's not running. If you've got something running, you can say it's worth a fiver. But if it's not turning on, oh, he said, it's just because it's not charged up. I said, well, you haven't charged up because you can't. You haven't got the charger. Well, I ain't got the charger either. So it's not worth a fiver to me. <laughs> so that would have been £32 at the prices he was quoting. Next, I saw these. Sharp. Sharp, and I'm like, oh, what's in the sharp boxes? And they are mini discs. Each one's got eight mini discs. That one's got eight mini discs. This one's got eight mini discs. And this one's got nine mini discs in a box. Uh, it's eight used ones and a fresh one, new, in its packet. So that's worth about £3.50 on its own. Um, so that's 24 used. And I'm like, what do you want for these? And he's like, £24. <laughs> okay, matey, all right. Now, as I said to you, he's all right with me bartering and, and um, not bartering so much as haggling. And I said, look, there's no way. The, the most they're worth is about £10. And then he brought out the, the, the recharger for the uh, PSP and he says, oh, that's £28. And I'm like, there's no, it's not. <laughs> I said, you told me that that was £32, and I told you it was worth about 20 And he's like, oh, oh. And I'm like, so what are we going to do? So I got this lot for eight on top of the 20 So I paid 28 entirely for that lot. So eight for those. Um, eight for those and 20 for the two machines with the, rim, with the chargers um, realistically I would have said uh, 8 for, that, for this and 12 for this with the charger um, but quite honestly with, with the charger i'm going to try and sell that separately and this one with the one pound 99 charging cable i do have one over there for charging my own one despite having a battery um a plug one sometimes it's just easier to use your usb i have a ds myself to play with so that is um i'm thinking six and four and sell this for £10 or so, sell this for 25 because it's got a broken hinge with a cable. So 23 plus a cable. Um, so that was well worth a tenner to me. And this one, tenner with the charger, which means I can sell it for spares or repair at that price and still make money. Or what I'm thinking I might do is replace the screen. You can actually get the screen for this um, Mac. This is a Mac 2 PSP, but it's called a, a PSP 1000, despite, despite. If we go up to a uh, 3000, um, and this one is a 1000, I think. I'm not certain of that. The screen on these is about 14 pounds delivered from China which would bring it in at £24, all clean and screened. With a cover, a new cover, it would be £30. 
uh, and that would be limiting all the scratching on the front, any little bits, nibbles around the edge of the, there's a couple of little nibbles on the edge there. Um, and I could do that at the same time as replacing the screen without any efforts whatsoever because it would just be putting a new part in instead. Um, but that would bring the price I paid to nearly 30 quid. Um, or oh, actually just over 30 quid, yeah, for this. And that would mean having to sell it for about 50. Now they will sell for 50 in really good condition. I'm not sure about that. I might sell it at spares or repair. I'm still undecided whether I'll wait until Wednesday and take it back. Um, I'm not sure. I don't like taking things back because that way I don't have that um, uh, more negotiable skill of saying a lot of the stuff I buy doesn't work. And a lot of stuff I do buy, not a lot, but a certain percentage of what I buy doesn't work. As an electric seller, you've got to accept that either you repair some things or you just bin them. Um, so it's quite a big pile for my, um, what did I say, 30 quid in the end? No. Yes. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I'll watch it back and tell you. One thing I do know is that these will sell separately or in bundles of say 10. But one thing I can do with these is, and I didn't tell him at the time, but I had a, an inkling that these cases would be worth something. And that's turned out to be the case. These are selling for between 12 99 and 14 99 There's been three or four sold in the last three months. And I've got two of those. Um, even with the postage and the fees off, they're probably worth eight pound each to me, just for the cases. Never mind the, the D, um, mini discs inside. The mini discs inside, um, because they say sharp on, and sharp make mini discs and mini disc machines, or at least they used to. So that was uh, quite a nice pile. And then I bought this to go with one of those um, Nintendo DS's when I've played a few of the games off it. This is one of those, I won't say pirated, it's like, um, well, I mean, a lot of the games are made up, but um, quite a lot of them are from other sellers, um, other companies. Um, it says Nintendo 3DS, but it's a DS cartridge. And then it also says new Nintendo DS 3, whatever that means. Um, but they're all Nintendo DS games. And I was curious as to how they did it. So what it is, it's a cartridge, but it's got a little mini um, SD card, micro SD card on it. There you go. And this is a SanDisk. Um, eight gigabyte. Which has got to be more worth more than the pound I paid for the games. Even if I was just, just to put it in my computer and format it, um, I wouldn't then be selling it as a game. I would be selling it as, as a memory card. And it'd be worth a fiver. As it is, I paid a pound, I've got all the games on it to play if I want to, or I might have a stroke of conscience and just keep the box and the, the eight, mega, um, 8 gigabyte card. The boxes are selling for 50p or so each now. So, on my way to leaving the second car boost. Anyway, I saw this sign on a tray full of stuff, and it says, train track. 10p each. I think that might have been part of the train track. So this is the box that that label was on. It's Trackmaster Tartomi for 
Tommy the Tank Engine. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. Um, quite a lot of stuff here. Well over 160 pieces. Um, anyway, I started looking through it and I said to him, would you give me a price for the whole lot? And he said to me, uh, yeah, I could do that. Did you want both boxes? All right, next to me, there was this box, which I thought this was like just the one, the only one that was 10 pence each. Next to it was this lot. And that's, it's not Brio, it's um, a lesser make, but let's face it, it's all exactly the same thing. But they were mixed in with this lot, which is, this is Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends as well, but this is the Mattel version by Galen, that 2013 or 2014, I think as well. So that's more modern than the blue stuff. So he said, would you want both boxes? Because that brown box was mixed in with, the wood box was mixed in with the um, the brown and silver uh, Gulen Thomas the Tank Engine track. So I said, uh, yeah, give me a price on both of them. And he says, about a tenner. And I'm like, well, the case, the boxes are broken. Both, both boxes are broken. Um, would you take eight? And he's like, yeah, go on then. It's okay. So I've got those big boxes and this lot for eight. There's at 10 pence a piece, there's about 16 quid's worth of the blue track. And then there's, I've sold this brown track before, the, the wood track. And that's, that's about 25 to 30 quid's worth. I'm not sure about the, uh, the Mattel stuff. And I'll certainly make this into bundles and sell it. And then I went back to his store after taking those back to the car because I didn't have any trains to go with it. So I bought some trains off him as well. And his trains were 50 pence each. Um, I got there's five motorized trains um, and a tender with curled in it that turns around turns into, I don't know, freight, and then turns into coal. So that's uh, Gulen, I think, Mattel. And then there's Thomas. I think he needs some new batteries. This one's, is it Fred? I'm not sure of the names of these things. This is a 2013 Gullion. Um, not sure about the name on that one. Is the red one, and he needs new batteries for definite. Then there's this one, which seems to be a bit faster looking. Each one of these has like grooves on the back wheels that fit into these tracks. Um, and help you sort of go uphill and then there's this one this one says Spencer on it so I'm assuming his name is Spencer and he's definitely a bit faster although they all need new batteries and this one says it's now this one doesn't have a name on but he's red so I've got Thomas, a green one, a red one, a silver one, and another blue one. Um, and the tender, the six pound, sorry, three pound for the six. Um, I have no idea what to sell those for. Um, a little bit of research would be involved, but this sort of thing I can sell like eight corners and 10 straights. Or I can make up three or four bundles and sell them separate. So that's okay. Um, that's your lot.
The whole lot cost me £99. There's a lot of setting up involved in order to check it and then list it. Um, same with all this wooden track, plastic track and trains. It's worth it with those though, because once I've done that, I'll make a really good profit. I mean, they only cost me £11, including the trains. So, maths, one side or another. I'll probably go like that. If I go like that, the maths will go there. That's probably the best thing to do. All right, so I'm going to say to you, <laughs> I can't do it. I'll say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I have a little graphic to say uh, subscribe now, but um, sometimes it's best to just say, you know, you really ought to subscribe if you're enjoying the videos. Um, I've only had two people since the last video. Two people subscribed. It's just... You know, you're letting yourself down. <laughs> okay. That's the side of talking to you. This is my second one.